This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. Well, good morning, St. Louis, and happy Sunday. You're taking a live look right now at Columbia, Illinois this morning, where a member of our greatest generation is getting ready to celebrate his 98th birthday. How about that? We'll learn more about his service and long life in about 15 minutes. Looking forward to that one, Travis. Yes, we are. Always like to celebrate one of those. I know. It's a big one. All right, well, good morning to you. It is Sunday, February 4th. I'm Travis Cummings. And I'm Mercedes McKay. Thanks so much for waking up with us. As always, Tracy yeah. Henson is here with us today. And Tracy, you're tracking some rain showers for later today? I sure am. So those showers, they're out, actually out right now, and they're starting to shift away as we head through the rest of the morning. But you can see it's impacted us over the past two hours. Not every county, but Phelps, Dent, Franklin, uh, Gasconade. I feel like anytime I'm talking about rain, Gasconade, you're always included in that mix aren't you? While that rain will continue on, it is it will start to taper away here. Uh, temperature wise outside, we are looking at around 41 degrees. It feels like 36. Winds are out of the east just about 10 miles per hour. And through the rest of our day today in St. Louis, we will make it up to 55 degrees. We will have a little bit of sunshine. Right now, St. Louis police are looking for a teenager who escaped the juvenile detention center on Enright Avenue last night. Sources tell our I team the 17 year old boy faces murder and assault charges. By now, he's been out for about 15 hours and was last seen walking along North Vandeventer. We'll update you as soon as we learn more. Well, new at nine, we have an update on the housing situation for the people who were forced out of their midtown apartments last month when pipes burst and flooded the building. The city of St. Louis tells us they've secured housing for the Heritage House residents through February 29th. They'll be split between cozy suites in the Central West End and the Downtown West End. The city also says it's working with private and public funds to cover the hotel costs. It was a deadly Saturday on both sides of the river. Officers now confirm the 40 year old victim died after he was shot in Marquette Park a little before 9 p.m. Right now, police don't have any more information on what led up to the shooting or a potential suspect. We're also following two other shootings this morning. The first happened just a few hours earlier. Officers arrived at Forestwood Park in Ferguson around 430 yesterday afternoon and found a man shot in the parking lot. He died at the scene and witnesses say they saw a black vehicle leaving the area. Currently, we do not know the name of the victim or any suspect information. And right now, a teenager is in the hospital with serious injuries after she was shot in Alton. Happened just before 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon at a home on Highland Avenue. Responding officers found the 13-year-old girl inside and performed life-saving measures. She was eventually taken to a St. Louis area hospital for treatment. If you have any information about these crimes, you're asked to call police. You can always leave an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. Now, as always, we will continue to follow these developing stories and bring you the latest. You can find updates on air on the 5 Plus streaming app and on the 5 on your side app. Well, if you woke up with us yesterday morning, this is probably a familiar sight. This massive warehouse fire smothered downtown St. Louis in smoke so much, in fact, that it showed up on the National Weather Service's radar. Check it out here. The NWS says it's fairly common for large fires like this one to show up on the Doppler for them as long as it's close enough to the radar station. The fire first broke out around 6 yesterday morning on 1st and O'Fallon Street in downtown St. Louis. It took 85 firefighters several hours to put it out. The building was vacant, but we're told homeless people often used it for shelter. Business owners from the area say it's not the first time something like this has happened. We have a lot of homeless that run this area down here in and out of these buildings trying to stay warm. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what caused this. It's just the way it is down here. Yeah. Uh, if you take a look around, all these buildings around here are abandoned. So sooner or later, I'm pretty sure that that's what's going to happen. The fire department says the fire did not cause major damage to any nearby building, so that's good. Crews are still investigating what sparked it. In just a few hours, Governor Mike Parson will visit the Texas border. He will join 15 other governors to discuss border policy and be briefed on the Operation Lone Star Mission. That's Texas Governor Greg Abbott's plan to counter a rise in undocumented immigration into the United States. 
All 16 governors are members of the Republican Party. Well, the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris are just over five months away. We've been following this this mm -hmm. weekend. Two athletes from our region competed in the marathon trials in Florida. Can't believe it's five months. I know. Only the top three finishers could land a spot in the game. Five on your sides. Andy Crawl has the results. Imagine you're, you know, playing an NFL football game and you, you know, you're going up against Peyton Manning or Marshawn Lynch or, you know, these names that have been around forever and it's like, Oh, that's the guy that I'm running next to. Middle school band director Jared Broadbooks ran in his first Olympic marathon trials on Saturday morning, his second marathon ever. It was definitely surreal to be able to run with some of the guys that I've literally followed since I started running back in 2012. And it's like that guy's lining up next to me. And he ran cross country at Lindenwood University, graduating in 2019 then started teaching at Barnwell Middle School about two years ago in the Francis Howell School District. Rod Books directs about 150 students a week in between his rigorous 10-month training. It speaks to his dedication and how truly highly motivated he really is, and you see that. Um, and pretty much everything he does um, for the school and the district and I think everything he puts his mind to doing, you know, you see that same dedication. Broad Books placed 26th out of more than 170 runners, missing out on being one of the top three men who will represent Team USA in Paris. Yet former Parkway Central runner Emily Sisson will be there. The 2020 10K Olympian making her first Olympic marathon team on Saturday. Sisson will be going for gold in Paris on August 11th. Reporting in St. Charles, Annie Crawl, five on your side. Oh, it's so amazing. Other notable marathon runners include a former University of Illinois runner, Colin Mickow. He finished in 20th place in the men's trial. And former SLU runner Molly Roberts finished 78th for the women. Congratulations to both Molly and Colin.